I'm back in Italy. And this year I'm showcasing gems that start the Mediterranean coast. This is just incredible. From picture postcard towns to rugged wild islands. Traveling across the Azure Sea. You're gonna have to arrive in style. And along dramatic coastal roads. And of course, I'll be serving up mouth-watering. Look at that. Authentic food. I thank you because I never tried this and this is delicious. Wow. Welcome to my Italian coastal escape. For my Mediterranean adventure, I've handpicked 10 places that I think reveal the very best of the Italian West Coast and its cuisine. From the Tuscan shores in the north to the showstoppers Amalfi and Sorrento, they dot the middle stretch, right down to the tip of the boots and the Aeolian Islands. And tonight my calorie journey takes me along the Sorrento coast and to the beautiful island of Capri. Capri is one of the chicest islands in the Mediterranean. It sits just a few nautical miles off the coast of Sorrento. At only six square miles, it may be small in size, but it's got a big reputation for excellent desserts and digestivos. And it's consistently voted the number one island in Italy to visit. And that's why. You can't come to this coastline without visit the island of Capri. And guys, when you do so, you're gonna have to rent one of these boats. This boat is called Mozzo Sorrentino, because when you arrive to Capri, you're gonna have to arrive in style. Or you can jump on a ferry from the main port in Sorrento. A 20 minutes ride across the straits transports you to this beautiful island. From the port, you take a funicular up the mountainous slopes, which dominated the island, bringing you into the town of Capri. The town is a maze of narrow little lanes, filled with designer shops, winding between traditional whitewashed buildings. It's been a magnet for the rich and famous since it first became a roaring hotspot in the 50s. On the Isle of Capri that I found her Beneath the shade of an old walnut tree oh, I can still see the flowers blooming around her Where we met on the Isle of Capri One of Capri's most celebrated residents is photographer Gennaro who at 87 lived through and documented those hedonistic days I'm lucky enough to be granted a private audience with this now retired and reclusive local legend who I am hoping can tell me more about this island's magnetism. Mr. G, it is impossible to describe the the amount of glamour and, and, and beauty in the building, in the women, in men, in the clothes, you would find princess from all over the world walking around Capri with the most amazing dress, but then all of a sudden they had a monkey on her shoulder, just because they could. Stars of the silver screen like Maria Callas and Brigitte Bardot flocked here, but his most famous subject was none other than America's iconic first lady. Jack Kennedy came to Capri and she went into a shoe shop. So what Tonino did, he hid behind the counter. And as she was trying the sandal, uh, the skirt came up and all her beautiful leg came to show. She got very upset at that moment and she took the sandal and she threw the sandal at Tonino and uh, Tonino threw the sandal back at her. Then they threw him out of the shop and Tonino reminded her, you used to be a photographer. I didn't know that Jackie Kennedy was a photographer. He said, at one point, you used to be a photographer and that's how you met your husband, the famous president. And she turned to Tonino and went, yes, you're right, I'm sorry. At that moment, in boy, 
diventammo amici. From then onwards they became good friends. I don't know if he's a pervert or he's a genius. <laughs> My time with the island's original paparazzo has given me a greater understanding on how Capri's air of exclusivity still attracts the glitterati. But this tiny island has also muscled its way onto Italy's food and drink map. And the reason why it can be found on the other side of the island in the more rustic Anacapri. Here life has remained authentic. Designer streets are replaced with sleepy ones and locals exchange gossip, surrounded by the scents of the town's lemon groves. This region's lemon are famed for being world class and their sweet sense has led me to Pierpaolo, whose family have a unique place in the history of Italy's most popular lemon digestivo. What's the story? The story is that uh, Limoncello it was born in this garden uh, more than 100 years ago. My grandmother, she used to prepare this uh, liquor with the skin of lemons, alcohol and sugar. So are you telling me yeah. that your grandmother started Limoncello? That's a story. Are you serious? Yeah. What's yeah. her name? Maria Antonia. Her Maria name? Antonia. Yeah. The lemon are not originally from Italy, but Arabia. Then, 200, 300 years ago, they um, import the plants of lemons here. These lemons are so good, they are used in cooking all over this stretch of the coast. But Pierpaolo's nonna found a better way to consume them. So this is to Maria Antonia. Maria Salute. Antonia. Salute. Delicioso. Mm. There is also another classic Caprese offering that complements that liquid lemon gold. The Torta Caprese, a flourless cake made with almonds and so beloved of the locals, they named it after the island. Now, I know that you got this Torta Caprese in front of me, but I'm gonna have to try a little bit. Um, Oh, you get the almonds in straight away, is it? Amandorla. Amandorla. The flavor of Italy. Salute. You Salute. give me loads of food for thought, my friend. Thank you again. So now I'm going to make my version of this super simple but super tasty torta caprese. I love to do this cake because we're using grounded almond, chocolate, pistachio nuts, eggs, and icing sugar. So four or five ingredients put all together. Trust me, the best cake that you ever had. First, roughly chop some pistachio nuts and leave to one side. Then we're gonna fold them in the right to the ends. Next, you need some good quality dark chocolate. At least 70 to 80% cocoa solid. And melt along with some butter in a heat-proof bowl over a pan of simmering water. Leave it there, it's gonna take you about 10 minutes. Next, separate four eggs. That's it. Add icing sugar to the yolks and leave to one side. For the egg whites, get yourself a whisk. Whisk away until nice and fluffy. That's it, that is perfect. And you know when it's perfect? If you can do this, look and nothing's gonna fall down. Then take the bowl with the yolks and icing sugar and mix until pale in color. Okay, look the way it changes color straight away. Look at that. This is perfect. Remove the now melted chocolate and butter mix from the heat. Okay, chocolate is ready. Now let's pour everything together. First, the chocolate goes into the egg yolks mixture. Slowly, slowly, piano, piano. Uh, folding. Okay, now is the time to put the ground almonds in. And again, fold everything together. When the consistency changes, only then do you add the egg whites in. One little bit at a time. So. Go for one first and fold it in. 
Look how the consistency is changing again. It's nice and fluffy now. Only now, when you get this consistency, is when you fold in the pistachio nuts. So get the pistachio straight in and fold in for about 30 seconds and the job is done. Line a loose bottomed cake tin with grease proof paper and then pour the mixture in. Now put it in the oven, preheated 180 degrees for 30 minutes. Look at that. I guarantee you this is going to be nice and moisture in the middle. To release the cake without breaking it, place it on an upturned bowl. Ecco qua. Six. Slice into generous portions to really indulge your taste buds. And to serve this very simply, I'm going to put a little dollop of mascarpone cheese which is the Italian way. You can always have some ice cream if you prefer. And then a little touch of icing sugar. I adored my time in Capri, and this Torta Caprese is my love letter to this simply beautiful Italian island. And I'm looking forward to exploring another town which is a perfect example of Italian coastal elegance, the clifftop town of Sorrento. I'm exploring some of the best places on the Italian Mediterranean coastline. My next stop is a short hop over the Azure Sea from Capri to the elegant town of Sorrento. Sorrento sits on the southern side of the magnificent Bay of Naples, with Mount Vesuvius smoldering in the distance, and this whole area is a magnet for tourists from all over the world. With its mild climate, Sorrento enjoys one of the Mediterranean's longest tourist seasons. My tip is to get here in the spring because after that it gets hot, hot, hot and busy, busy, busy. Known as the gateway to the Amalfi and Sorrento coasts, this town is a perfect example of a classic Italian town with narrow streets filled with artisan shops that lead to the must-see place in Sorrento, the Piazza Tasso. This cafe-lined square sits in the heart of the town, perfect for people watching, a favorite Italian pasta. And for enjoying a classic Sorrento dessert made using the coastline's lemons. If you come around this area, you're gonna have to try this cake here. It's called Delizia al Limone. It's made with a, with a sponge. Inside the sponge, you find a custard and it's completely covered with a light lemon cream. I mean, coming around here and not having the Delizia al Limone is like going to Ireland and not trying a pint of Guinness. It's crazy. I love the sweet treats of Sorrento, and as a chef, I'm all about new ingredients. So I'm excited to learn about another fruit grown only in Italy that I've heard of but never tasted. It's called Amarena, a type of cherry which is used traditionally as a flavoring in our famous Italian gelato. Just three miles inland, on the fertile slopes of the Lattery Mountains is the Piano di Sorrento. And it's here I find the small but potent fruits. Mario, an artisan farmer, champions the art of preserving this fruit. So what's the difference between an amarena and a cherry? The plants and the fruit is so uh, different because this is not sweet, it's dry. So the amarena is bitter, smaller, lighter, and is used for cooking. Yes. 
This cherry farm has been the family for generations and Mario took over the business 20 years ago. And he continues to use traditional methods to sweeten the amarena. After we pick the, for the tree, we just do uh, hand work. Okay. Each cherry has to be pitted by hands. Trust me, this is tricky. What's happen if the stone stays there? <laughs> yeah, it's more strong. Ah, you need to, okay, yeah. well, let me do it again. All by hand, there is no machine to do it? The machine press the fruit. Too much. Too much. And makes it dry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look, I done one. Yeah, Finally. nice, Gino. So once we need to fill all of this, Full. And after... Uh, We're gonna be here for a week. <laughs> in one day, we make three, four of these. In one day? In one day. Four in a day? I think this guy's taking the... So you put that, yes. then you put the sugar. When it's full, put for uh, 40 days in the sun. So 40 days marinated in the sun? Yes. I never thought in a million years that it would be so labor intense. I'm gonna try one. Oh, he's bitter, huh? Yeah, oh, really, really bitter. Really. I can see why they preserve these cherries in sugar. I'm leaving Mario to sweeten them, as I'm going to make the perfect dish that these cherries will complement. This is my signature Sunday roast. You guys call it beef wellington. In Italy, we call it filetto in camicia. Camicia means a shirt in Italian. And the reason why we say shirt, because the puff pastry is gonna be rolled all around the filetto beef, and it's gonna be fantastic. Step one, unwrap your filetto beef, which has been chilling overnight in clean film. Heat some olive oil in a pan. Sear for one minute on each side to seal the meat. Then let it cool down. Step two, on a large sheet of clean film, arrange some Parma ham and spread generously with red pesto. Now you can imagine the flavors here, the saltiness of the Parma ham with the sweet sun-dried tomato pesto. This is gonna be incredible. Then wrap over the cool down beef, cover in clean film and chill again. That's it. Into the fridge for 45 minutes. Step three, while it's chilling, roll out some puff pastry. Get the piece of meat, just put it in the middle, and make sure that when you roll it, you go two fingers to seal the lengthways and two fingers on the width side, so then we can enclose it nice and beautifully. Place the pastry on fresh clean film, with the meat in the center. And this is exactly what you want to see. Look, beautiful. Brush some mixed egg yolk over it and press the edges shut. Cover in clean flame again and chill for an hour. Perfect. Meanwhile, prepare the gravy. Now, this is how I'm going to showcase Mario's cherries. It's caramelized onions with red wine and amarena cherries. Start by heating olive oil on a medium heat in a pan. Add some red onions, a pinch of salt, some rosemary, and a drop of runny honey to help the onions caramelize. Not too much. Now for wine. Boil the wine off and simmer for 15 minutes. Then add in a glug of balsamic vinegar. Oh, the smell is incredible. Next, add some chicken stock. Then, after 20 minutes, strain off the liquid using the back of a wooden spoon. Pour the gravy back in the saucepan and lower the heat. Now, the last touch is to add in the amarena cherries. If you can't find amarena cherries, then strawberry or cherry jam will do the job. This is gonna give a natural sweetness to the gravy. It's gonna be incredible. Put them in there. Give it a stir. Switch off the heat. Your gravy is ready. Next, remove the clean film from the beef and pour it into the middle of the baking tray. Make sure 
that the seal on the bottom stays on the bottom, like that. Use the back of a knife to score the pastry. Cover in egg wash and season generously. Depending on how you like your beef, cook for 30 minutes for medium rare or 10 minutes longer for medium. If you like it well done and you want to completely ruin it, then leave it as long as you want, I don't want to get involved. Thirty minutes later, look at that. Did I not tell you this is going to look amazing? Look, that's exactly what I wanted, very pretty. Let it rest for ten minutes before carving into thick slices to serve. Remember, I want medium rare. Now for the moment of truth. And there you have it. Beautiful Amarena cherry gravy. Riddled summer vegetables are perfect to go with the meats. And the way I like to serve my filetto di manzo is with a wine that is called Rue dell'Inchiostro Aianico. This wine is rich, full-bodied and sweet, just like my filetto di manzo in camicia. Look at the color. I love when a red wine is really red. Guys, do this recipe on Sunday. Trust me, your family, they will love you forever. And so salute to you and to the beautiful Sorrento coast. Next time, I head to Tuscany. It's the original Roman holiday, where I rustle some cattle. I think I was born to be a cowboy and rustle up a feast on the beach. The touch of whiskey, why not? If it's good for me to drink, I'm sure the meat would mind. Capture the essence of Italy's beautiful coastline and learn to cook and eat like an Italian in no time with Gino's new cookbook, Gino's Italian Coastal Escape.